Okay, so let's assume that all of those SMI suppression vulnerabilities were, you know, closed off by using the appropriate defensive technology. What else is there? Well, there's one more thing, an attack called Speed Racer, and this was an actual hardware race condition in Intel hardware. And the defense for this would be to set the SMMBWP, which was again the you must be an SMM in order to write to the BIOS. So how did that work? Well, uh, if you're on a PCH and later chipset, and if it's at SMMBWP, then you are not vulnerable, right? So there you go, that's the defensive path. If it didn't set SMMBWP and it used protected range registers, then are you vulnerable? Well, if no PRRs, then yes. So again, I said that, you know, there's these two main mechanism, protected range registers and the BIOS lock enable. If you're not using protected range registers and you only have BIOS lock enable, then you would be vulnerable. If you are using protected range registers, this is listed as maybe vulnerable because if you go and look at this research, um, basically, you know, Rafal and Corey went off and found vulnerabilities in NVRAM variables. And so NVRAM is typically not going to be protectable by a protected range registers. So if an attacker could still write to an NVRAM variable, they could potentially exploit the BIOS. So that goes back to that notion of, you know, exploiting the BIOS is one of the different ways that you could attack the system in order to bypass BIOS lock enable. So how does Speed Racer work? Well, introduce Speed Racer, and we are now going to do a race condition between multiple CPUs or multiple cores. And so this core down here is going to set up all of the spy bar memory mapped IO registers. So they've got an address in there, they've got a write ready, and all they need to do is just hit go, and then a transaction will occur. But you need to set the BIOS write enable before you hit go, otherwise it's not going to work. So the first CPU is going to set BIOS write enable, and down in the hardware, we know we've got our LPC hardware, C SPY hardware, I'm just mixing them together here. We said BIOS write enable when set to one goes down to the LPC hardware. They've got their conditional logic that says, well, I see that BIOS control BIOS lock enable is set, so I'm going to fire off an SMI. Now the SMI will fire, and this particular processor will go into system management mode. But the thing is that not all processors will necessarily enter SMM exactly at the same time. So this processor could still be active for a very short period of time before it too is forced into SMM. So this thing may be forced into SMM and this thing may be ready to run its rewrite of BIOS write enable to zero. But before that code gets a chance to rewrite this, this code successfully wins the race it's not in SMM and it issues the command fgo and then all of a sudden its spy write transaction is allowed to proceed through to the flash chip. So in this way, you know, this is the, the sort of, you know, problem with this little, you know, useless box of setting and unsetting, setting and unsetting. This did get written to one and then this race condition can come through and write to the flash chip before it can be, you know, quickly reset to zero. So fundamentally a race condition in the hardware. And why does the BIOS write enable SMMBWP, why does that bit help protect you? Because even if this thing won the race, if the SMMBWP was set, it would, this hardware would recognize, you know, this CPU is not an SMM right now, I should not allow it to write to the flash chip. So that's why that defense works for us here.